that's driving us from a van that might not fit you. Lily's a little bit in the way. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> the dog. <laughs> Lily, move it. All right, so we're here in Rochester. It's uh, the first- New York. Yeah, New York, baby. <laughs> it's freaking sweet. It's finally uh, a little less humid and hot than last week. And we're here, first C1 of the season. Um, course is pretty sweet. Right now it's a little wet. It was raining the past couple days. Um, with the wind and everything, I think it'll dry out a little bit. And they added a couple sweet technical features from last year, so it should be pretty sweet. The course, they, they so they took out a lot of the features this year. Wow, features. They I took out a lot of corners. Yeah, you can consider yes. that's the American feature. It was perfect. I really <laughs> like it. Perfect. So there's a lot of straightaways. You like the straightaways <laughs> yeah. I mean, who does? Right. Like we all know, Gage likes the straightaways. Well, so I, I mean, that's an obvious answer for who we think is going to ride well on this course because yep. there's a lot of straightaways this year. I think it makes I did it more see tactical, Gage, I did see Gage clip a pedal on one corner every single lap he did it. So, so that's where we're going to attack. That's where I'm going to attack Gage. But aside from there, Gage will be pretty good. Yeah, and, and, and it feels a little more Euro here than years past with the wetness and the grass. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a little soggy. But, I mean, it, it'll be dusty by the time we race tomorrow. So, yeah. you know, I think it's from a feeling standpoint, it's kind of going to be a like Groundhog Day for Roanoke, like it'll feel hot, it'll be dusty, and it'll just be pack racing. You know, I think there's nothing here that's gonna separate the men from the boys, so I think, I think it'll be tactical. I think, I think the only thing is there's a couple sections that are very pinchy. There's like one line that you can take through, and if it's a big group of guys going into that, which will probably be, uh, some dudes driving us from a van that might not fit. Lily's there. a little bit in the way. Hey, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the dog. <laughs> Lily, move it. <laughs> there we go. Damn, he's sweet. Freaking yeah, he doesn't care. Right. Um, what else? Um, where were we at? That was some good driving. Um, so, so in total, I think you know, in context for the for the year, it's the first C1, and I think everyone wants to ride well. But the the biggest kicker is that only 11 Americans have points. You know, so our good buddy Gage is coming from 33rd call up. Yep, coming buddy. from 33rd. So I think I think it'll make for a really interesting racing dynamic. You know, I think a lot of guys, you know, I think people like Carrie and, and maybe Lance will see that Lance is start or that Gage is starting 33rd and are they gonna go to the front? You know, and try a to drive it. Lap kind of thing, or like, like an F1 formation <laughs> lap. Yeah. Just, just parade around. Just parade around for a little while. So I think it'll be yeah. I think it'll be fast and hard racing but I, like i said i think it's going to kind of be a little groundhog day to roanoke and in terms of how it feels and the way the course is and mm -hmm. you know I, I think it's going to be really good prep going into the next big block of racing just to yep. you know get some get some faster racing because it's it's a lot faster than roanoke roanoke was like roanoke, tight and twisty yeah. and this is a little more it's like be, it's gonna be some motor pacing it's gonna be wide open and then yeah, I think everyone's gonna be punching it tomorrow. It's the first first C1 and a lot of valuable points going into World Cup selection. So through that be good. There's an airplane. <laughs> Gage, Gage, Gage isn't Back watching. Gage is okay. He's down here. <laughs> He's down here on the ground. So Rochester done and dusted. Um, it was it was a good start to the year, you know. Between Roanoke, kind of felt like a shakeout race, and then and then Rochester now is kind of all systems go. You know, we have Baltimore next weekend, and then we go into the World Cup weeks. Um, and so, really, it was you know it was a nice nice introduction to having everyone there, and um, I raced what I was looking for. Um, I'd say. You know, there's, I made a couple mistakes throughout the weekend for sure. Um, Saturday, I had a great start in the C1. Um, I was, I was thrilled with it. I was sitting sixth wheel, and and we came through on lap one in a in a big group of ten, maybe maybe twelve. I don't know. It was, it was a pretty big lead group the first lap, and and I kind of got jostled to the back near the pits, um, and found myself kind of off the back of the group for a second, and and I had a little panic, so I, I pushed pretty hard lap two into the woods and uh 
It was it was caught caught on the GCN Eurosport broadcast, but I I was cornering too hard and and my hand caught a wooden post and I I went to the ground pretty pretty hard, um, so that hurt and uh, I was right back up and just a little little damage to my my fingy, my poor fingy. But from there I, I was in the second group chasing, um, which eventually became probably the third or fourth. Um, and so I was, I was there, you know, Curtis had a couple problems and, and I was able to lat latch onto him while he moved back up um, and he finished two ahead of me, I think. But we did some pretty good laps towards the end of the race and I, I kind of got, I got, got up behind the Curtis motor pacing machine. So it was good to get some, some really fast laps in because Curtis was, was pushing hard. Um, and so ended up like ninth on the C1. It wasn't 100% what I was looking for, but... You know, I kind of felt with the mistake that I had made, I, I had more in the tank going into Sunday. Um, and so Sunday lined up, um, I had an average start, which by corner two, I just I just didn't break when everyone else did and, and a gap opened up and I just went to the front. And so I think I was sitting fifth wheel, you know, the group separated a lot quicker. So it was, it was me, Lance, Kerry, Curtis, Steven, and then, and then ben, Vincent Boshtans. And so, within one lap it was kind of like okay so this is this is the lead group like we're here we got to settle in um and so it was a it was a much harder day in terms of the course layout they did it in reverse and it was um it was a bad day to be on the back of the lead group because you just got accordioned really hard um i suffered a thousand deaths out there i was with the lead group for the first lap and a half got stuck behind lance when he crashed um, and then I spent a lap and a half trying to claw my way back to the lead group, made contact for half a lap, and then they shelled me about halfway through the race. And so I was, I was alone in no man's land in fifth for, I don't know, I think four laps total. Um, you know, Gage and, and Van and Ham were behind me chasing pretty hard. And um, I'd kind of done the mental math of like, well, I think they're gonna catch me no matter how hard I ride. Um, and so I was kind of just hoping to hold them off until one to go and then hope they were pretty tired and, and maybe I could, you know, get one of them on the line. And um, I unfortunately dropped a chain with about a lap and a half to go. They closed up six seconds on me and then put six seconds into me. <laughs> so it's kind of, I'm not going to say it was game over because you never know. Some, one of the two up front of me now could, could have had a mechanical or something, but um, they didn't. So ended up. And then, and then the day in seventh, and it was a, it was a really good day to kind of see where I was, where I was capable of, and where I was riding at. Um, you know, a couple things, you know, could have gone better to plan. The course layout was not advantageous for, for my, uh, my lower level of fitness for the lead group. So it was kind of a day where it, you know, got shelled out quickly. But um, I felt strong, and and I'm. I'm feeling really good going into Baltimore. You know, it's been a really good first two weeks. So I think, I think everything's moving up and um, the trajectory looks good. And it's been it's been really hard and fast racing this year. I think um, within the top ten, the gaps have closed down a lot. I think there's not much in it anymore between top five and top ten. I think everyone's battling really close, and I think it's going to be a really exciting year to watch um, from a fan's point of view. And and you know. <laughs> I can't help but be excited about it because I'm the one doing it for the first time in a while. You know, being at the front and and racing with all the racing with all the guys. So um, that's Rochester. We're here now, hanging out for the week, and then we'll head out to Baltimore on Friday. And uh, and um, I've never raced that course, so we'll see what it's like and and look forward to uh, some more good racing.